About there, in focus. Bit of a close up. Complete silence. I just recorded a whole script about this little camera, the Insta360 Go Free. You know, all about its tech specs, mounts, features, you know, stuff like that. And we're still gonna talk about that stuff, but as I started to pull the edit together, something else began to emerge. Moments and memories from the last six months began to sit next to each other on my edit timeline and started to talk to each other. And it kind of reminded me of when I used to take a mini DV camera recorder with me away on holiday. The way that you would get these lovely juxtapositions of clips that would sit next to each other on the tape. And since having this camera, I had pretty much taken it out every week and captured a small library of moments from my life. You know, none of them were perfectly composed or lit, but still perfect in the way that they captured these moments. And I think that's what I want to focus on today when I talk about this camera. You know, the magic of having a little thing like this that can just follow you around everywhere. The omnipotent Insta360 Go Free. Uh... got this camera originally to shoot behind the scenes on my client jobs, mainly so I could bring you, my audience, closer to my work and show you what I do. You know, whether you're a YouTuber, a content creator, for anyone who is interested in getting POV shots or behind the scenes content without having the faff of sort of rigging something a little bit more substantial, I think this is a really great solution that's really hassle-free. Okay, yeah, it does look a little bit silly when you wear it, but I can literally clip it onto my cap or pin it to my clothing and just get on with what I'm doing without worrying about it. It just doesn't split your attention or pull you away from what you're doing. Mounting it is so easy and quick. The detachable camera has magnets on the back, which means you can quickly mount it and use the main body to monitor your shot and it all just works so seamlessly. And I think for most people, that will be the selling point for a camera like this. It's ease of use over using larger, bulkier cameras or even your phone. Especially as you can mount and chuck this camera pretty much anywhere in situations that maybe you just wouldn't want to do with a 1400 pound iPhone. Okay, let's just get it out of the way. The footage from this thing kind of sucks. Maybe that's being a little bit harsh, but it's average, you know? It's not gonna be winning any awards or you're not gonna be using a camera like this as a A-cam on a big production. But that's okay, you know, when we use footage from cameras like this, it's for the content of the footage. It's for the unique perspectives that little cameras like this can provide over larger, bulkier cinema cameras. Resolution caps out at around 2.7K, so no 4K, which is a little bit of a shame. And the footage is captured in 8-bit rather than the 10-bit you might be used to. So, you know, there's still a little bit of room to push it and pull it in post and give it a bit of polish and a grade, but you're just not going to get all that lovely latitude that you get in a 10-bit recording. To be honest, I kind of like the scrappiness of the image. It stops me obsessing over getting the perfect shot, which, you know, often pulls you out of the moment that you're capturing. I like to shoot in the flat profile on this camera as I find this gives you some decent range to play around with in post. As you'd expect for an action camera, it has pretty amazing image stabilization with different strengths that you can apply depending on what you're doing. Although one thing I did notice was that lowering the shutter speed negatively impacts the quality of this stabilization. So I reckon recommend just going with the flow, keeping the camera on auto to maintain a higher shutter speed. There is a night mode, but it doesn't seem to fix most of these issues. This camera just kind of works. Very flexible in how you use it. It's not fussy. It has a square sensor. You're able to take a crop of that and shoot either in 16.9 horizontal or 9.16 vertical. And the camera itself is perfectly happy to capture in a vertical or horizontal orientation. I guess it uses gyros to auto rotate the image when you do this. Sometimes it doesn't always get it right, but a bit of waggling of the camera and shaking it around usually sorts that out. 
You can also catch it in this full sensor mode, which again is really fun. I quite like experimenting with it. It's kind of like this square fisheye image. I kind of like this as its own thing. You can obviously crop wide or tall frames out of this. I love messing around with this footage in post, you know, like adding or removing the distortion. I've even used a Hansel with it. And you can just get some really fun looks when messing around with the footage. Because the footage is kind of ropey to begin with, it gives you permission to be a bit more creative with how you treat it and what you do with it in a way that you probably wouldn't want to do when you're handling beautifully captured footage on a large red Komodo. I think being creative, whatever that means to you, is about having fun, it's about play, right? It's about having the freedom to experiment without the guardrails on, to find out, I guess, what happens when unexpected things collide and a little camera like this just takes you out of that everyday practice and lets you capture things you might otherwise miss. I've now got this lovely little folder of footage of random moments, stuff that Oddly, I just would never capture on my phone, but having this dedicated little camera has encouraged me to capture these snippets. And I would recommend this camera for anyone who wants to bring their audience into their process, their work life, wants to capture stuff behind the scenes. And although cameras like this are typically described as an action camera, I wouldn't necessarily call it that myself. It's an adventure camera, one that will follow you wherever you go, wherever that might be. Thanks for watching, I'm Ed Prosser, until next time, see you later.